stop moving the goalposts, mm -hmm. be consistent, and let us get back to normalcy. That's right, because then you don't know when there is an end in sight because they just keep moving it. But, you know, Sean, the mixed messaging and the virtue signaling isn't just coming from the White House. Take a look at how Saturday Night Live opened the show this weekend. Happy Mother's Day to my godmother, Dolly Parton, and to my mom, too. All right, so from just a quick look at that, there's around two dozen people on that stage or so. No mask. Now, I want you to take a look at the same stage an hour and a half later. What do you see? Look at this. Thank you to Miley Cyrus, The Kid Leroy, Grimes, my mom, and all the cast moms. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in the world. What do I see? A bunch of liberal, woke Hollywood leftists that are trying to send a signal that realize that they probably got caught at the beginning of the show doing what they do all the time. But this is consistent for Saturday Night Live and NBC. Remember, they paid audience members right. to come so that they could get around crowds because they called them you know, employees by giving them a stipend or whatever it was. They are so full of it. It's, you know, it, they have one set of rules for them and another for everybody else. But they only put those masks on at the end because I think they probably realized at the beginning they were getting called out for it. Oh, absolutely. And this is the same city where you have a governor who's saying after 10 p.m., you know, the virus doesn't come out anymore <laughs> or comes out after that. Or it's with just alcohol. The, right. It's just this mixed messaging and this idea that I have to put on a mask so I don't get in trouble. I don't look bad. No, it's and, and they have made a mockery of this. And and then you wonder why people are hesitant to listen to it, to obey it, to maintain it. It's their fault where we are where we are and why people have lost trust. It's them who have perpetuated these problems, not anyone on the right. One more thing about COVID, though, before we move on. A majority of schools have started to open back up, but some students are actually not going to school. Why? Check out this headline from the New York Times. It says, schools are open, but many families remain hesitant to return. Experts have coined the term school hesitancy to describe the remarkably durable resistance to, re to a return to traditional learning. And it goes on. It says, an added complication is continued opposition to full-time in-person learning from some teachers and district officials with unions arguing that widespread vaccination of educators and soon teenagers as well does not eliminate the need for physical distancing. What is, I mean, this is, it's now, you know, again, schools have been safe. We've seen it with parochial schools. We've seen it with private schools. It can be done. It can be done safely. It's almost like the unions continue to find reasons not to do this. Well, absolutely. And I think this goes back to the administration saying that they would trust the CDC when the CDC said that they would, it was safe to open schools, yet they didn't do it. Um, and so now you have this concern from parents because they're saying, well, I'm getting a mixed message there. Yeah. All right. Well, the other big story in Washington right now is Liz Cheney. She is the number three House Republican in leadership. There will be a vote on whether or not she keeps her leadership job this Wednesday. That's coming up. Uh, and Congressman Brian Babin from Texas, he is going to join us after the break to tell us what's really going on inside the House Republican Conference. That when we return. Congressman, where do you stand on the push to oust Congressman Liz Cheney? Well, the, the bottom line here, Lindsay, is that we absolutely have to be a unified voice if we're going to take back Congress in 2022, in the midterm elections. And uh, I, I have always liked Liz Cheney. I, I admired her father when he was vice president. Uh, he, he spoke up uh, during the Obama administration and, and spoke his mind about uh, some of the uh, decisions that Obama was making. However, uh, she, uh, Liz, is our number three uh, re uh, Republican in our conference. And while she has every right, every entitlement uh, to her own views, not really as the, as the conference chair, we've got to stay uh, unified. And uh, she actually survived a, a vote uh, to uh, be ousted last time. And, and I thought things would get better. However, she, uh, it, it, she continues to articulate, uh, you know, an ongoing uh, problem with, uh, with, with former President Trump. Uh, and that is her business. And I, I would never, ever take that away from her, except that she's our number three leader 
uh, in our conference. So we have to be unified if we're going to take this House back in 2022. Uh, it is a must, an absolute must, uh, especially in the face of lockstep Democrats behind AOC and, and, uh, and Pelosi. We've got to pull together. Uh, and take this house back and save America from socialism. That's the bottom line. I, I agree. Now, the interesting thing is, I think your analysis is spot on, Congressman, right? If you're going to go against the majority of the conference, it really makes it difficult to be one of the top leaders of the conference, especially when it comes to the messaging of it, right? And, um, and I think it's another thing to vote and to not bring it up, but it continues to come up in her talking points. But right now, a lot of media outlets, most of them left wing, continue to claim that there's this civil war within the Republican Party. How would you describe that? No, I don't think there's a civil war. Certainly, uh, there are some differences of opinion, but hey, we're Republicans. And again, we don't yeah. march in a lockstep uh, like the Democrats do. We all have our ideas and our philosophies. And, uh, you know, we, we tend to vote those, uh, as, uh, as uh, history kind of shows us compared to the Democrats. Uh, but we absolutely, in this, everything's at stake. America is sitting on the precipice, on a cliff, if you will, uh, of socialism, of going down a path that would lead to a, uh, an America that would turn into a Venezuela. And uh, we cannot afford... Uh, to have dissension, uh, uh, you know, in the leadership uh, speaking for the entire conference of uh, 213 or whatever we are uh, right, uh, currently uh, uh, seats in the House of, in the House of Representatives. Uh, so it's just imperative uh, that we get all on the same page when it comes to going after the real adversary here, and that's the Socialist Democrats against the Biden administration, who who uh, promises unity, and yet we haven't been invited to have any input into some of these horrible bills. He's proposed $6 trillion in spending. He's opened our borders up. He's rolling our dereg back, and, and uh, we're getting ready to have a huge tax hike under the, under the guise of infrastructure. Well, I serve on the Infrastructure Committee, and I can tell you that most of this infrastructure proposal bill uh, has nothing to do with roads, bridges, uh, waterways, uh, 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 broadband, et cetera. Uh, it's simply to pay off uh, the Democrat cronies, the blue states and counties, and uh, we've got to save America. Right. Yeah. Well, I want to switch gears before we let you go to jobs. Um, we saw jobs numbers come out last week, not as good as expected. And you can see why. There's a recent poll that shows how much people are making these states when they claim unemployment. I just want to show it. Washington State, 41,000 in and of itself. New York, 33,000. New Jersey, 37,000. And so you have several governors um, across the country who are actually suspending some of these unemployment benefits because they want to help people get back to work. There is a great jobs need. People aren't getting back out there. Where does Texas stand on this? Oh, I, I'm hoping that our state, our governor here in our great Lone Star State and our legislature, who is in session right now, uh, needs to push back on this because I said this from the very beginning. Uh, my friend and colleague, uh, former chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, Kevin Brady, uh, we all talked about this back uh, when we were passing the CARES Act, uh, which I voted for. And uh, we said, how are you going to get people to come back to work if you're paying them more to be, you know, off work, staying home uh, than when they were when they were working? And so uh, we're seeing GOP governors around the country talking about cutting unemployment benefits. And, uh, you know, they were expecting a million new jobs. What a disappointment under the Biden administration to have, uh, you know, 266,000. Now we've got unemployment inching back up. Uh, you know, it's up to 6.1 percent right now. And, uh, you know, the, 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 care, uh, the uh, CARES Act, which I did vote for, and I, I mentioned that a second ago, it, it increases benefit limits from 50 to 79 weeks and pays an additional $300 on top of whatever that state's unemployment is. And so we've got to open, uh, reopen this economy, get Americans back to work. It's the only way we're going to ever recover uh, from the pandemic last year. The best stimulus plan, and I've said this 100 times, the best stimulus plan is to put people back to work, get kids back in school. Americans are workers. They don't want to depend on the government to make ends meet, and they never should have to.
That's, I couldn't agree with you more. It's funny. I mean, I don't understand. It doesn't take an economics degree to figure out if you pay people more than they make going to work, they will stay at home and watch Netflix and play video games. It doesn't take an economics degree to figure that out. Congressman, I appreciate you being with us again and look forward to having you back soon. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.